let the table be well set in the richest way possible. At one end, let there be a Trionfo representing Pluto's palace. At the other end, Proserpina's palace. She should be coming out with a serpent at her feet. Pluto likewise, with his dog Cerberus and a trident in his hand. In the center of the table, a garden of sugar, its gates made of candied citrus, a fountain in the middle of good design with various figures set off by two mountains of green gelatin with wild beasts and hunters. Bartolomeo Stefani gives this advice in 1662 in the art of cooking well. The perfect start to my little discourse on marzipan architecture with making a cassata siciliana an Italian recipe dating back to medieval Arab origins. Have you ever thought about the origins of this sweet substance of finely ground almonds and sugar that is marzipan, with eggs and a splash of orange flour or rose water as according to some Tudor recipes? In Europe, the notion of transforming sugary confections into works of art formed in the 15th century. The first consumption is noted earlier in the Middle Ages. 11th century Caliph Al-Zahir celebrated Islamic holy days with artworks from the sugar bakers, including 157 figures and seven table-sized palaces. In 1412, Al-Ghuzuli tells us of an entire mosque molded from sugar. Traveling through trade routes of Western Europe, the wedding of Henry IV and Joan of Navarre in 1403 saw decorations in the shape of animals, buildings and other forms. Leonardo da Vinci deserves credit for his Renaissance architectural marzipan creations and ambitious plan for assembling a 200 foot long cake replica of the Sforza Castello in the late 1400s, made mostly of blocks of porridge reinforced with nuts and raisins covered in multicolored marzipan to celebrate Ludovico Sforza's marriage to Beatrice d'Este. Later, Maria Antonia Carême, who was born in 1783, is oft quoted as the architect of French cuisine that referred to confectionery as principal branch of architecture, making fantastical table worlds at the royal court. What unite architecture and food are the dichotomies of both material processes and presentation choices, working along the spectrum of balance, contrast, proportion, scale and emphasis. Food structures are also composed of repeating patterns on a micro level. Think of beaten egg whites helping lofty souffles rise to the skies. They also made our pan de España, literally Spanish bread, fluffy as the base to our casata. Proteins uncurl and stretch out, repositioning between water molecules and hydrophilic amino acids on the proteins that stiffen the egg whites when beaten. Once in the oven, the air bubbles trapped in the egg whites expand and a scaffolding is created through proteins and fats stiffening in the heat. Materials used in food are as important as materials used in buildings for them not to collapse or disintegrate, withstanding gravity when entered or until eaten. According to Leonardo, a good confectioner should have studied in architecture, I quote, for without a true knowledge of weights and stresses, he cannot create confections which will stand on their own and not be liable to subsidence or even total collapse, end quote. Architects and chefs alike make conscious choices to showcase these materials or disguise them. Exposed steel beams are to the architect what a rich nut base of a cake is to the chef, shown from the edges of the cake, highlighting some of its essential building blocks. In contrast, beautifully carved wooden wall paneling likens the decorated marzipan layer of patisserie produce through disguising the core. Function and frill are combined.